Hey guys, it's Peter Jordan here at the Lost Angler Fly Shop in Daphne, Alabama. And you can find Lost Angler Fly Shop here in Delta Marine and Outfitters. Uh, again, here in Daphne, Alabama. Um, what we're going to look at today is we're going to be tying up the redfish toad. This little guy. One of my all-time favorite redfish flies. It is just a killer. It's got that mantis shrimp bugginess to it. It is just a solid, solid fly with a ton of motion in the water. Really great because we're uh, getting into the dog days of summer and uh, they're going to be starting to hunt a lot more just crustaceans in there. This is something that's going to resemble that mantis shrimp. It's going to resemble that fling shrimp. It's going to look like a small crab. It's like a generalist pattern of uh, kind of what makes the Adams fly so amazing is it kind of looks like everything. Well, this is the uh, a toad fly for redfish that kind of looks like everything. And we're going to take a look at it. So hang tight. Let's get time. All right, guys, so we're going to start this with a Gamakatsu B10S size 2. And a lot of people say, well, man, why don't you do uh, a more traditional saltwater hook? The reason I like the B10S is, one, I like the fact that it's black. Um, I feel like that just plays better with my fly, like when I'm doing my coloration. The second reason is the B10S is a smaller diameter wire. And so when I'm setting the hook on a fish like a redfish, uh, something that's got a, a tough, tough mouth made for crushing up shellfish, I know that I'm going to be in good shape. All right, so now that we've advanced the thread up and down, we're going to be using large brass dumbbell eyes. You can pick these up here at the store. They're going to play really well with the color we got going. And I'm leaving a nice little gap between my eyes and the eye of the hook. And this is so that if I decide later on that I want to add a weed guard, I can. So this gives me the option to fish it with a weed guard or without. All right, these are pretty well in it to win it. But because it is redfish we're talking about here, we are going to add just a little bit of super glue and just kind of go around it a couple ways. You'll be in good shape. There we go. All right, now we're going to move this to the back of the hook. The back, I'm going to go to a zonker strip. This is a tiger barred zonker strip. Uh, you can do whatever color you want. Uh, I happen to really prefer kind of oranges. That's just me. All right, so we're going to get this guy off of here. And I always like to tie in a little bit more than I think I'm going to need. And kind of the trick is you take your zonker strip and you pull that rabbit fur away. So that's not going to get in the way of what you're doing. So you're just cutting bare skin. All right. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to pull a little bit of that hair away so that when I'm tying it down, I can just nail down some of this bare skin. And again, this is more uh, than what we're going to need. Okay. All right, this is going to go to the base of the hook, to where you start to get the bend. All right, right on. Cool. Now, next step. One of the big things I get from a lot of people is, hey, you know, these, these flies can foul, and they really can. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some uh, monofilament, and we're going to form a loop. Okay, we got it. And we're going to bring it over. Switch your fingers and pull that down. That'll get it out of the way. And we're going to form a loop. So it goes to each side. Boom. Just like so. We're going to bring that on back. And just remember loose, loose loops. Okay. And once we've got that, we're going to tighten down. There we go. Now that's not going to let that come up and over. So not bad. Not bad at all. All right. Now that we've done that, next step. 
Here at the bottom of our Zonker strip, we're going to use some Sparkle Thunderstruck. I love this stuff from AP. It's just got such a buggy, buggy look. It looks awesome. And, and they use it in a ton of different things, but man, I, I really like it. Just adding that little bit of bam to the bottom of a fly, adding a trigger point to it. So I'm going to pull some out. And what I like about it, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's crinkly. And man, that is just some, some shrimpy, buggy stuff. And I really like that about it. And again, we're going to tie this in longer than what we need, and we'll trim away the excess later. All right, now we're going over it. Boom. Perfect. All right, next on the agenda, we're going to take some tan, or this is natural uh, ginger, saddle hackle, and then we're going to take some EP brush right here this is just a smaller brush so I just want to kind of go in and kind of give that iridescence we're going to take that guy we're going to tie him in first then we're going to take a good looking piece of hackle and I want a uh, pretty pretty wide webbing at this point uh, schlaffen works fine uh, I just happen to have hackle in hand which is good for me all right, all right, right on. And then we're gonna pull this guy so I know what I'm working with, like so. Pulling those fibers back so I know what part of that feather I want to start to work with. Now I'm gonna pull this guy down with the sparkle, cut away the excess. Then I'm gonna take my hackle pliers Flip these guys up. We're just gonna let these guys go on together. And we want to make sure we're not capturing the fibers together, okay? do the best we can with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these fibers and we're pulling them back before we come around, okay? Taking them, pulling them back before we come around. Do the same thing. Doesn't matter if we're on the top or the bottom. Pull those fibers. Pull them back so we're not capturing our good looking stuff here, okay? Same thing again. Keep on coming around, keep on coming around, oh, this is coming out very nice, all right, beautiful, perfect, that's about as good as it's going to get guys, all right now we're going to take our thread back, where we're at right here, swap them around, tie them off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my on my mountains over here. Pull that away so I know that when I'm cutting, I'm not cutting both. And I want you guys to keep this in mind that uh, I'm using El Cheapo uh, titanium scissors you can get at Wally World, so that when I'm cutting through this wire. I'm cutting through the thread that I tried to avoid. Duh. All right, so that went well. All right, so we're just going to come on back with it. All right, bring it on back. Sweet. Got it looking nice. Now we can take our brush. 
start to brush this guy out. This is just the Loon Ergo comb. I happen to really like it. All right, right on, nice and clean. Everybody's captured up. All right, next. Let's add in some eyeballs. So we're going to rock the Enrique Puglisi. This is the UVX Crustacean Eyes. This is in yellow. And these things are super nice. They look awesome. Really, really, really good in the water. I'm using a bright yellow because it stands out against the uh, ordinary fly. Boom. We'll pull two out. Usually I can pull two out of the center. There we go. All right, and I'm going to tie them on at the same length. Just make sure they're at the same length, basically. And notice I'm pushing it at a downward angle. Okay. And you want it to maximize out at about the same length as the uh, end of your hackle that we just palmered on. So we're gonna come on around, real nice and easy, beautiful. We're gonna get to the end of these stalks right here, and we're just gonna trim this off, and hopefully not cut our thread again. Beautiful. Nice, 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 nice liking this a lot. All right, cool. Now, next thing. Let's get us some silly legs. And this, guys, is the Bard Crazy Legs. This is golden orange flake. And this is a good chance, if you want to, to throw in a different color. I'm just going to keep with my golden orange motif thing going. I want to throw two to each side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right here, come down the center. Get this guy out, boom. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Boom, very nice. All right. All right, now I'm going to lay this on this side. Wrapping around. And how my eyes went up. Got to remember, this is going to ride hook point up. So how my eyes went up, I want these to go straight back. I don't want them to get in the way of my eyes. Or vice versa. And I'm just going to loop this around. And when we're putting it on, nice, loose loops. Like so. Then we get done, then we can do it. Nice few tight loops. Get everything nice and cleaned up. Cool. All right, so next, let's start to add the body of this fly. All right, and for the body of the fly, we're going to be using EP, sculpt to fly This is 3D tan. And what I like about the sculpt to fly is it's already got my colors already in it. Uh, you can do a ton of different colors. You can do whatever you want to. Uh, you can mix and match so it's striped up. I'm just going to do just tan because that seems to work really well for me. solid color is just fine you can do multiple colors and you guys if you want to if you don't want to uh, stack this in uh, you can just take a brush and that is a super fast easy way to do it so i'm taking this stuff i'm taking it breaking it down cutting it in half then half again so that i've got what i need to work with all right Cool. And we want it to be a little bit longer than what we think we're going to need. So now we're going to take our thread and we're going to advance it back to here. Then we're going to take this, set it on back. Go once over, twice over. Then I'm going to come around here. Make sure you guys can see this. I'm going to come around behind.
behind this, okay? Then I'm going to come between these two, so I'm going to pull this one out of the way so that I make that figure eight, okay? Boom. And I'm just going to repeat this step going all the way down, okay? So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're just going to repeat this step over and over again. Now, if they go to move around on you like that happens, just pick it up, move it around. Not the end of the world. Get it positioned where you need it to be. All right. Back around behind. Pulling this over. Just like we did a minute ago. All right, we're going to do it again. As you guys can see, I've already cut a number of these guys. So I just showed you guys how to do it on camera, just so it's a little bit easier for you guys. Just set them aside. Uh, normally, two two hanks of that will do just fine. And you can tie this down to smaller sizes, like size four or whatever else you want to. And once you get used to doing this, uh, you can cut these uh, little sections and smaller pieces, so there's a little bit less waste. But when you guys are just kind of getting used to this, you really want to take the time, have a little bit more than you think you need, and it's going to make your life easier. So it's kind of like doing dumbbells, dumbbell eyes on the fly. No real big difference. a little bit more and what I do is I take my large piece of uh, EP hold it and pull it off like that that way I can put it back in the bag okay all right do it again two more to do it I'd say sweet Oh. And I don't have enough thread on this bobbin. All right. So what to do if you run out of thread? So I just pulled the last remaining bits of thread off this uh, right here. Yeah. Right. I'm just going to take my hackle pliers, hold that piece of thread. And then I'm going to grab a new spool. And in case you guys are ever wondering, I almost always exclusively tie with Danville monofilament. It works great. It matches every color fly. It's Instead of having to wonder, oh, okay, well, what fly you want to use? And yeah, you can do, like if you do different colors of thread, it can um, do all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, as far as like putting in different body colors and what have you, but you know, we're not really rolling that way today. Same thing as you do, it's like you, yeah, 
cut your thread like you know maybe I did earlier in this video. Sweet. All right, cool. Right on. All right, now let's add that last little piece. Let's get it trimmed up. Let's make it look nice. All right, so adding that last little deal in. Same again. Boom. Looking good, baby. That's all over by the crying. So let's bring it on up. Lance it to the eye of the hook. And you can whip finish at this point or you can just glue it. I don't care. I do two double half pitches. Uh, I'm weird like that, I guess. Got a nice. Now we'll hit it with just a little bit of UV thin right on the app there. Careful not to get it on the eye of the hook itself. Because if you do, you will regret it. Hit it with that UV light. It's not instant, but it's as close as you can get, man. It's pretty sweet. All right, right on. All right, cool. So now we got that. So now what's the next step? Now we're going to take our big scissors. These are the five-inch razors from Loon. I'm going to pull this guy up. Hit him at an angle. And this helps me form the basis of what I'm doing. I just bring it to the other side, same as I did the first time, same little angle. And you can see by rocking that, that longer scissor, I can make a really consistent cut. So this way it's a little bit easier to shape the fly overall. And then we're gonna take it and just trim it down. His ears lowered. All right, same thing again. Not too bad. It's not a fly that takes an exceptional long amount of time. It's easy to do. It's super durable. All right, let's so just trim this guy up. And the best thing you can do right now is just kind of take him out of the vise, clean it up a bit here and there. Be in great shape. All right, now I want to just make sure I'm not accidentally getting. Those hackles because they're so pretty. They're so nice in there. They give a lot of a lot of good look to it. Beautiful. Okay, now so let's take a look at the overall length of the fly. I definitely don't need a zonker strip this long. So what you want to do is, in order to figure out how long you want your zonker, take it and pull the hair back, and that's the length. Okay. See what I'm saying? So that's going to bring your length. So we're going to do the same thing again to figure out where you want to go. Just remember, cut longer than you think because you can always go back and cut more off. Okay. Now, I got these guys. And because I tied them in together in one loop, it's really easy for me to handle these. But I'm just going to take them up to the side real quick. I'm going to take them all the way up. And then I'm going to take this sparkle, this thunderstruck. I'm just going to kind of trim it like that. 
So it has that, still has that unevenness to it, which is what I, I want it to have that nice uneven feel to it, right? All right, now we're going to take our legs like we talked about. We're going to bring them on back. All right, what do we got here? What are you doing? Come here. Get out of my way. Cool. All right, and we are not going to want it too much longer than where we are there. Boom. Super nice, super clean. Cool. I'm going to bring this out of the vise real quick. I'm going to clean it up real fast, and then I'm going to show you one of my favorite little things to do with these guys. Hey, guys. So I've had a lot of fun with this stuff. This is the UV fly finish in orange. So I'm going to take just a little bit. This stuff's super thin, guys, so just kind of keep that in mind. So when you're going down, just be easy with it. Don't squeeze that applicator. She will come right out on its own. But you want to talk about adding a really cool little bit of color? Buddy, this is it. Oh. Look at that, man. That is just a nice little pop of color. Love it. All right, and then if you want to just give a little bit of panache, you can take it and just remember you can take a Sharpie marker to this EP. It colors up really, really well. Uh, don't think I'm going to do it with this one. I think I really like this color combo, the way she sits. Clean and simple. So you can use any color uh, variations you want to do. So you could have mixed up the different colors of uh, EP fiber to give it like a striped look. Uh, you can change out the different colors of the zonker strip. Uh, you can change up your eyes, legs. It's a really cool pattern that you can really mix and match to be in your area. Like you can make this guy look like a blue crab. You can make him look like a mantis shrimp. You can do it any color you want to. It's one of my all-time favorite redfish patterns, especially down here. It's a good size pattern. It's uh, easy to see. I love it. And size 2 B10S will stick them. And this gives a good profile for redfish can them. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this. It was a really easy fly to tie. You saw me make plenty of mistakes today. That's just how it goes. We're all going to make those mistakes. So I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. If you liked what you saw, hit subscribe. Hit that like button. If you're in uh, our area, please stop by. Our hours are Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 6. And... Uh, we're going to be working on updating our website from lostangler.net. Uh, so you're going to be able to buy stuff retail side. So you're going to be able to buy stuff as far as like fly materials, flies, fly rods, uh, merch, t-shirts, hats, whatever we've got. You're going to be able to pick it up online. So if you're not in our area, you can still enjoy it. Uh, we're going to be expanding this section to do more fly tying. We're going to be talking about different uh, patterns that are hot for fly fishing down in our area, down in lower Alabama. So if you like to go to Orange Beach, Dolphin Island, whatever, this could be really helpful. So like I said, if you liked what you saw, hit subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll see you on the water.